Hello, I'm Linda Ann at Studio ABC. I'm a design team member for Paul for Paul USA. It's an amazing product that you can use to make three-dimensional art. You can find their products that I use in this video and many more at pauperpolusa.com. Today I'm going to make a Christmas tree to decorate my new studio out of an old ribbed t-shirt. And one of those vases that you see at every single garage sale that you go to, or you probably have some of your own. If you saw my last video, it was an eagle, and you might have remember that I used this wire form sparkle mesh on it. It's really easy to cut and uh, you can get it at any arts and crafts store. Uh, it cuts with scissors. Very easy to cut. So I'm going to use that as the base of my Christmas tree today. You can even use these kid scissors to cut with. It cuts right through the mesh. I have a little styrofoam cone over here that I'm going to use to get the shape of the wire. So I cut off some of the wire or the mesh and I'm just rolling it up around this cone just to get the shape. And I think I'll roll it a couple of times so that there'll be more than one thickness on here to give it some uh, stability. Okay, that should do it. I'm going to mash the ends down. Cut off some of that but uh, that I don't need. And this is the base I was talking about. It has a water line in it. I don't have a bottle brush and I can't get in there to clean it up, but it's not going to show, so I'm not worried about that. Tell me you don't have 15 of these around your house. So I'm going to wrap the wire around to try to figure out exactly what I'm going to do because I'm I just kind of figure out things as I go. If I use this as the base, I could either hot glue it on or I could make it small enough that I could just slip it over the top and that way I could slip it off if I wanted to use the base for flowers or something. <laughs> Probably not. But the reason I want a base is because I don't want to worry about getting this exactly perfectly level on the bottom. So that's going to eliminate that need. I'll have it on something that's level and then it can have its own shape. I'm thinking if I just curl this with my fingers a little tighter than it was on the cone, make it a little more pointy at the top, I'm thinking it'll work and set on top of that bottle just fine. And how's that? I may have to try it two or three times before I get it just like I want it, but we'll see. I'm bending up any of the wire that's down below and that'll make it sturdier. Plus, I think I'll bend up another layer kind of all the way around. Yeah, it's a little long. Either I make that top more narrow or I bend up some of the bottom or maybe both. I still want it more pointy, so I took it back apart, and I'm going to roll it even tighter than I did before. A little more slender and pointy at the top. The nice thing about this is it's similar to, I guess, aluminum foil. You can just undo it and redo it as many times as you need to. Now then, I think this looks a lot better. And I think it'll fit over the bottle better. Yep, that's better, but I still probably want to mash it. Well, I'm definitely going to mash this kind of hem area in. And I'm going to turn it down again. Give it more stability right there at the end. Along the hem line. Plus it lets the glass of the vase show just a teeny tiny bit at the bottom that way. Okay, so let's try that out and see how it fits. I like that a lot better because I can see the base right there at the bottom. I'm going to like this a lot better. You might notice that at the seam, 
I have some little loose edges, but when I put the pauper paul over it, it's so flexible that I think it'll hold it together. I could put a little more um, reinforcement around some areas that don't have any if I want to, and I think that's exactly what I'll do. I'll use a little piece of this leftover and reinforce it in the areas where I didn't turn it up very much. Actually, I didn't turn it up at all because there wasn't any wire there. You know, sometimes it's hard to tell on camera what you can see and what you can't until I get it on my computer. So let me scoot this back so you can see it against my brown table. This little wood grain table makes a better contrast. And so here it is. Here's my cone. Okay, so here's the old t-shirt. It's one of those old rib knit t-shirts. And it's got some spots on it. And I think I had it in the pauper paw box one time and wiped my hands on it, to tell you the truth. But those areas I can cut out. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start cutting. I want the hem of this shirt around the bottom of the pauper paw tree. So I'm going to make a wide little piece here. And I do not have a lot of pauper paw left. I'm just hoping that I have enough to get this... To work. I have pauper paul in flesh tone colors, but not in the transparent, which is my favorite. I really like the transparent pauper paul. Let's see how this is going to go around. Okay, I could double it, but I think I'll try going over the neck of it and then just pushing it together till it fits. I'm going to go ahead and cut all the strips because it's hard to cut after you get the pauper paul all over your hands and gloves. And I've ruined many a pair of scissors this way. If you get in the middle of the pauper paw and then have to cut your strips, it gets all over your scissors and it's a mess to clean up. There's obviously a lot of jagged edges on this, so I'm going to take my scissors and kind of trim that up. Because those jagged edges sticking out can make little kind of sharp places once that pauper paw's dry. Pauper paw dries super hard. It's not like most fabric stiffeners that you've heard of. This makes it like, at first you're going to think that it's not going to dry. At least that's what I always think. Oh, this is not, this isn't going to get hard. Well, it does. In a few days, it, the first 24 hours, I'd say it gets kind of leather hard. You have plenty of drying time, in other words. And I'm going to trim off all these little areas so that they won't become little thorns on the tree. The ones that will be covered on one side by the layers, I don't have to worry about it, but the bottom area of each one definitely needs to be smoother. I've cut what I think is too many strips, but it's better to have too many than get in the middle of the project and not have enough. So I'm cutting them narrower as I go towards the top of the tree, wider towards the bottom of the tree. And I'm gonna place them in order here I'm still trimming off little areas, but I'm going to place them in order that I'm going to use them in, and hopefully, again, I've cut too many instead of not enough. I keep an old set of clothes here to change into for this purpose because I don't like to wear something that I might get it on the pauper paw on it. Uh, here it is, pauper paw transparent, and as I said, this is my favorite one. They have it in different colors. They have bronze and gray and some flesh tones, but this is my favorite because you can do anything you want with it. You can add color to it or let the color, original colors show through. What I'm thinking at this point is I'll probably do some dry brushing on this tree after I get it done, but I like white too, so we'll see how it turns out and We'll just figure that out as we go. I'm putting on my rubber gloves because I don't like to dig it out of my fingernails that much. And these days I don't have a whole lot of time to be fooling with messy hands. And since I don't have very much in the bucket, I'm just going ahead and using the bucket. Usually I pour out what I think I'll need, but I think what I'm going to need every bit of this to make this tree. So it's not going to contaminate the, the bucket 
get little uh, fibers in it or anything because I'm going to use it all. Once I know it's totally saturated with product, I'll pull it between two fingers to get some of this product off because I don't need it drippy and I need the extra pauper ball this time. I'm running out. That's how much I like pauper ball. I use a lot of it. I left this attached as a circle. I didn't cut it open. I'm, I don't know if that was the best idea or not. We'll see what happens. I thought if I just brought it up and gathered it up until it fit, that that might work best, but sometimes my best ideas aren't always the best process. So let's just see what happens. I'd like to be sure that the bottom of that hem on the t-shirt covers the bottom part of the wire mesh. I don't want any mesh showing out uh, when I finish the tree, so we'll see. Maybe if I work on the back and then on the front and kind of gather in between, I can make this all fit up. And you know what? This is going so slow that when I get to editing, I'll probably speed this up for you. I've got a lot organized in my new studio, but I'm not totally organized, so I realize all of a sudden that I've made a pretty big mistake here because I like to put my Pauver Paul objects on something that I can turn easily. So I I don't have it the studio totally organized and I need something to go under this. So I'm gonna stop and look for something to go under it real quick here. Okay, having a piece of foil or uh, a piece of plastic or anything under it so I can pick it up and turn it. That plastic that I have is covering the table and I couldn't easily pick that up and turn it, but I can turn the foil. So that's a good hint for you to know. You need to be able to, to twist it and turn it as you're working on it. And everything just fell apart, so I'm starting all over. Learn from my experience and don't forget to put something under it. You won't have that problem of everything falling apart. Also, if I had a little, little more time left tonight, I'm kind of on a tight schedule. But if I had a little more time, I would let this dry slightly before I start trying to attach it because it gets when it gets tacky it's easier to work with. There's kind of a fine line between it getting tacky and then it, it gets tacky enough it starts sticking to your gloves so you ha kind of have to when you get it to the right stage where it really sticks well you have to work pretty fast at that point. So see I'm starting all over because I keep letting it slip off. I'm not sure that it was a good idea to do this thing in a ring anyway. Probably would have been better if I'd have left it in, just snipped the side and left it in a strip. You know, Pauper Paul's just not that hard to work with. And how many times have you tried to rush through something and it ended up costing you more time than it would have if you'd done it the proper way the first time? So that's kind of where I am tonight. I'm a little tired, and I'm a lot tired. I've been working hard, hard, hard on this new studio, and my grand opening is Saturday. So I'm trying to get everything done and my obligations met. And when that's over, hopefully I'll have a little more time to spend on it, and I'll be more patient. Because working with it uh, patiently it, you don't have this kind of trouble because I've started over like three times now. But at last, things start to work and I start to get it together and it's looking good. I'm starting at the bottom and going up because each layer, the edge of the layer will cover the top of the previous layer. And it'll also it just makes sense because naturally the tree will look better that way. It'll look um, layered. <laughs> I am tired. I'm not making a lot of sense tonight sometimes. As I look back at my work here on Fast Forward, I realize that if I had uh, dipped all of my strips at one time, you're learning a lot from my mistakes tonight. 
if I had dri dipped all of my layers at one time, it would have had time to set up and get that little tackiness so that I wouldn't be struggling with it like I did with that first layer. The next layers went much easier. Also, I snipped it and didn't try to do it uh, as a circle. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea, but, you know, I wanted to try it. So I tried it. Probably won't ever try it again. And the nice thing is, if you don't like the way it looks, you just pull it off and start again. And uh, you can adjust the layers as you go. I'm forgetting and picking up the tree instead of picking up the foil. As I said, learn from my mistakes tonight. Seems like a comedy of errors. But this is so pretty. I really like this ribbing in this. I think this is going to make an excellent tree. I'm almost done and I can tell you right now I have made the decision not to do any dry brushing on this when it's dry. I like the way it looks. I love the textures that are on it. I love the white on white and I, it's going to be even prettier tomorrow after it dries. So it wasn't Pauver Paul's fault that I made so many mistakes tonight. It was mine. And here it is. I might do a tree topper. I might do something at the top of it, but I think it's just really pretty just like it is. And if I don't do a tree topper or star, I can use it in January too. In fact, that's a good idea. I think she's finished.